In this episode, I'm going to quickly show you how you can add posts to your WordPress installation or how you can save posts to your database, but from the front end and of course using WP REST API. Before we begin, let's just discuss setup a little bit. So I'm using a theme which is called Watch Learn, and as you will see, this theme is very, very bare bones. So it only has this index.php file and style.css. You need to have style.css so that you can define your theme. And I have this index.php file which just says hello world to us. And that's about it. If we take a look at it. Uh, this is our theme, right? If I refresh it, you just get hello world. You of course need to activate that theme. Uh, I'm using a theme because I want to do this with vanilla JavaScript, but of course in the real world, you would probably not even be using a theme. You would probably be using something like Next.js or Nuxt or some other JS framework uh, to get your data. But of course you can use this inside of a theme also if you need it. So this is going to help us get going very quickly. And I'm going to show you how you can add posts or other custom post types to your WordPress database. As I said, I'm just going to be using a vanilla JavaScript for this. And I'm going to open some script tags right here. And first of all, let me just show you how you can firstly get the posts in your theme uh, so that you can display them. And uh, this is very easy. And actually we covered a lot of similar things to this in the Next.js and Strapi series and practically using the same code because of course Next.js is just React plus uh, vanilla JavaScript, right? So you would just do something like this. My domain name is wprest.test. I'm using Laravel Valet to set up my site. So that's why I'm getting this domain but you can of course use something like mamp xamp wamp whatever you like to use so we are just fetching the posts uh, then we are returning that response and then we are just console logging out that response and if i save this go to the browser refresh it as you can see we are getting the posts from our rest api's posts route and you can see all of the posts right here. Of course, if you were using something like Next.js or Nuxt, this would be pretty easy to display on your site. But if you are using vanilla JavaScript, it will be a little bit harder because uh, you would have to interact with the DOM and then displaying that uh, and then displaying all of it in the DOM and so on. But we are not going to be doing none of that in this episode. I'm just going to show you how you can get the posts, how you can authenticate, and then how you can add the posts into your database so that you get the general idea of how this works. And then of course, you can expand on that to suit your needs, right? Okay, so this is the way we would, we would get the posts. Now, how do we add the posts? Well, first of all, we need to authenticate because you can't just add the posts to your WordPress site without entering username or password, right? So to do that, we are going to install, I already actually installed it. You would install this plugin right here. And this plugin is called JWT Authentication for WP API. So we are going to be using this plugin and this plugin is just going to add a REST API route uh, to our system that we can connect to, uh, get the token, and then we can use that token to add data to our site, as you will see in just a few seconds. So of course, uh, install this first take a look at the documentation because this is very important. As you will see, it, this will not work out of the box just yet. So let's just try it out. So to authenticate, what you need to do, you need to go to your code editor and do something like this. Okay, so uh, we are now fetching another route, uh, which is called WPJSON JWT Auth V1 token. So this is the route that we are getting from from our plugin. And then we want to send that request with a post method. Of course, you send some headers. And in this body, uh, you would send username and password. For me, that's admin and test123, right? 
So you would send all of that and then you would wait for the response and you can actually uh, console log out that response. I'm going to remove this for now because uh, we just want to test this out first. So if I save this and go to my browser and now if we refresh the page, as you can see, we get this forbidden right here. And this is because we need to set up a J, a JWT auth secret key in our, in our WP config before we can continue. And you can read about that right here in the documentation. So this won't work without this. So you can just go to your WP config. And as you can see, I already had it set it up. A setup, I, it's just commented out. So I will define my JWT auth secret key and add a key to it. Now to get the key, well, it says in the documentation that you can just go right here, paste it in, and now you would get some random keys. So you can take any one of these and set it to your JWT uh, auth secret key. Okay, so you got that set up save it and now let's try a, to test out our site refresh it and now as you can see we are actually getting that token so this is our token right here of course to use it uh, we would need to save the token and we are going to do that with local storage so i'm just going to save that token into our local storage like this so at the end of uh, this function, so we are getting the response, we are co console logging out user that token. So this is our token. And now I wanna save that token to my uh, local storage. And I just do this, local storage, set item, JWT, and we are sending the user token. So if I save this, uh, go to my browser, refresh it again. And now if we go to application, as you can see, uh, in our local store storage for our site, uh, we have JWT token set up. Of course, probably in the production version of this, uh, when you're doing this for a live site, you would probably want to save this inside of a cookie instead of a local storage. But for now, we are just going to save it here so that we can access it whenever we need it. And of course, we are going to need to access it when we want to add some posts to our site, because to add something to your site, you need to authenticate yourself. And we are going to be doing that right now. So first of all, I don't want to add my, the post on the page load. So I'm just going to create a button, uh, which is going to, uh, when we click it, add a post to our website. Okay, and uh, my button is going to have a class of JS add post. It, it's going to say add post and uh, that's about it. Next, I'm going to create a function, which I'm going to just call uh, add post so that I can access it when I add a vent listener to my button. I'm just going to say to that button, okay, when, whenever someone clicks it, uh, just run this function. And what this function is going to do is just going to add a post to our site uh, using fetch, of course. Okay, so first of all, I just add fetch. Uh, then we add method here. After that, we wanna add some headers. And now the important thing is we need to send authorization header. So uh, to send authorization header, you need to send it with a bearer. And to do that, and actually we did that in the next JS Treppy episodes, uh, you would just say bearer and then send your JWT token. So we set a bearer and we get the JWT token from local storage. So you just do local storage dot get item JWT. That's about it. Next thing you need to uh, send is you need to send the body. So of course you need to populate your post. Of course, we are going to hard code this right now, but in the real world, you would uh, add a form, you would read that form, get the data from that form, and then populate the body of this request, right? So for now, we are just sending title, add post from the front end, content, and the status, status of the post is going to be published. Of course, this can be draft or something else. And then we just want to return everything and return that response and see how it goes, right? 
Now the only thing we need to do is to connect this function to the button that we created a little bit earlier. So I'm just going to add this. So we are just using query selector to get the button with the class of JS add post. And now we just want to add event listener to that button so that when we click it, it's going to run this function for us. Okay, save it and let's check it out if it works. Okay, I'm going to refresh this. We have this add post button and if I click it, it says we get the response and this is great because when you get this response you can use it to maybe show the preview of a post that you're adding or something like that whatever you need so you get the full response for your post you get the ideas everything okay now for the real test to see if actually this post is added to our posts so if we go right here we go to posts and as you can see right here it says add posts from the front end if you click on it we get the content that we added so, so this is the way to add posts from your front end right as you can see this is pretty easy at least this basic example you would of course use forms you would need to handle errors and everything yourself uh, when doing this for production but this is the basic way this works and uh, you can also not just add posts but you can add other custom post types for example we have a post type of products that we used in the previous episodes uh, so we have our where are they so products right so these are our products so i can add a product right here uh, and i'm going to use instead of posts right here i'm just going to say product Maybe for you, this will be products, books, or something else, whatever your site needs. So if I save this again, uh, go to my browser, refresh it and click this, uh, we add the post. Now this post is not inside of posts, but it should be inside of products. As you can see, add posts from the front end. It has the same body, so it's the same post. And that's about it. So this is the basic way of how you can add uh, your content to your WordPress administration using your frontend and using WP REST API. Okay, so this has been it for this video. Everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.